Stargate is out. It is both a pretty terrible TV show for the 1990s and also a half a trillion dollar infrastructure program that was just announced all about AI. I have some real questions. The issue with Stargate, as far as I can tell, is that it crowns a winner before the race is over. It says OpenAI is going to win the game. They're going to win it funded by SoftBank and Oracle's going to build the data centers. Obviously, for those three players, that's great. Even Microsoft gets in on the game. They're happy to. They're a partner of OpenAI. NVIDIA, of course, is supplying the chips. The problem is that there are a lot of other players in the game, and it is not clear how this reshapes the race for them. They're not giving up. Anthropic is not giving up. I know I just did a video on them, but they're not giving up. And Meta's not giving up. Google's not giving up. The stakes are too high. And yet here we are crowning a winner. And I'm not even getting to the shifts that we've seen with model makers like DeepSeek entering the scene or how X.AI is coming on quickly with incredible gains, uh, huge compute clusters. And so when I look at the problem space and I say to myself, this is a hugely dynamic situation. There's lots of model makers, they're all competing how does it make sense to have only one model maker get in on this project? I don't think it does. And I think it exists that way because this was Sam Altman shopping a deal for this kind of a data center back, it feels like almost a year ago, like it was like 10, 11 months ago, and then it died down and now it's back. So that brings me to my second issue with this. This is a 2023 architecture that they are describing, not a 2025 architecture. And I don't know why that they are, well, like, why? That doesn't make sense. We've learned so much. This is such a dynamic space. It changes so fast. So I'll explain what I mean. 2023, we thought that we had to have ever bigger clusters of GPUs to train on ever bigger data sets in order to make these models smarter. We thought that in early 2024 too. That's why this thing is talked about as having 10 million GPUs. Well, the thing we discovered is that at the end of the day, you can have all of that compute, but there may be diminishing marginal returns just for pre-training. You have issues finding the data unless you're generating it synthetically, which we've made some progress on, but that's a big scale up in synthetic data production, if that's what we do. As, as Ilya famously said in November of last year, long after Stargate was first kind of kicked around, we have one internet, right? Like we have one internet sized data pool. We've used it. So I think the reason why that feels weird in that context is that this is a architecture that fundamentally assumes this sort of older paradigm for how we trained AI models and the new paradigm, the one that's unlocking continual progress that everyone's excited about, it's not mentioned. Inference time compute is a very different paradigm. It allows you to run multiple threads simultaneously is what happens when the model thinks. Frankly, Gemini dropped a version of that yesterday with their new update to Flash 2.0 thinking. It, Apparently, I haven't had a chance to even try it yet. Apparently, it's on par with O1 Pro. So the model makers are continuing to compete. They're competing on different architectural standards. And Stargate is sitting here like with this 2023 structure and everyone's saying it's going to be a you know, vaccine for cancer, this and that. Well, maybe, but it's a weird way to go about it now. And it makes me wonder if we've seen this much drift in the way we do AI in a year because we're learning so much, and this thing takes four years, is this just going to feel outdated by the time we're done with it? It might. It might. And that kind of comes back to the goaling. Like in other major infrastructure projects that America has undertaken, we've had very clear goaling. You go to the moon. You bring back the astronauts. It's super clear. By the end of the decade, they even had like a classic timeline on it. Fine. This is not very clear. 
it's like, yeah, we'll do some cancer stuff. Okay. What, what does done look like? What does good look like? Does this mean that like also the defense department will be using it? Maybe it's not really clear. Who gets to decide how all of that compute resource is allocated? That's also not clear. Does SoftBank decide that? I doubt it. So I have a lot of questions, as you can probably tell. I think it absolutely reshapes the race. It's worth talking about. I put more thoughts on my Substack, but at the end of the day, to me, this is a project that makes me tilt my head and think and raises more questions than it answers. And everyone's sort of talking about it as if it's a done deal, it's obvious, like, this is it. I, I don't know, like, I don't think building the future on two years ago architecture four years from now is automatically the win. Maybe, like, maybe they just repurpose the compute. I don't know. But it feels a little odd. What do you think?